Good morning, Emma. So you brought your viola in, which is super exciting. Um, and we're going to start out talking about your bow. Um, so first thing is that never touch the bow hair with your hands. Um, the bow hair is made out of horse hair. We put something on it called rosin. And if you touch it with your hands, you'll get oils on the bow. Um, and then it won't work. It won't stick to your string. So um, when it's in the case, you always want it to be loosened. You can see right now that the hair is very close to the stick. That means it's loose. Um, there is a screw at the bottom. If you turn it to the left, it will get looser. So you can see it's getting even a little closer. And then if you turn it the other way, to the right, it will start getting tighter. And you want to tighten your bow to the point that you could slip your pinky in in the smallest portion. So the stick itself, now you can see it is still curved. But it's not completely straight, which is really good, but then I could slip my pinky right in there. It's kind of hard to show you that, okay? So, um, and then you're missing rosin in your case right now, but I have rosin that is attached to that cello rack right behind me. Um, I pulled it off already. It looks like this. It's made out of tree sap, um, and it's just, it helps your bow stick to the string. So. What you'll do is just put it on there, wrap your fingers around the whole stick, and just kind of squish it back and forth, kind of little tiny strokes. Um, if you don't have rosin on there, so I haven't put much on, your viola will sound kind of bad. It all, it doesn't play. So I've put rosin up here, and not a lot yet, but I haven't put much down here and it doesn't stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and really rosin your bow up for you um, so that it will play. So the next thing I'll teach you is how to do your bow hand. Um, when it comes to how much you should rosin though, just um, do it probably every couple days. Um, and if you don't have it, use the stuff at school, it's fine. So, all right. This, I'll keep working on this later. Anyway, so here's what your bow hand should look like when it's done. You'll notice that my thumb is curled, all my fingers are curled. It's very loose and relaxed. So the way that we do this is you're going to, um, you'll set this on your knee. I'll put it on my hand for right now. Um, but you're gonna keep the tip of the bow towards the ceiling. So first thing is take your thumb and curl it. This is my left, or sorry, my right hand I'm working with. You're gonna stick your curled thumb right into this little area on the bow between, this is called the frog, this black part, and then the wrapping. Your thumb will go right in between and it's on its tip, not its pad, right on its tip so your nail is pretty much there. Then make sure your fingers are nice and loose. You'll wiggle them, kind of like a sea anemone. And take your two middle fingers and wrap them around so they are all the way on the frog. So you can see my thumb is still curled. These two fingers are on the frog. Next one, I will take my pointer finger, curl it slightly, and I'm gonna lay it on its side and it's away from my other fingers. And you can see that the middle chunk is sitting on top of the bow. These ones, it's much more round. This one's not as far. And finally, pinky's gonna come and it sits on its tip and it is curled. So this is your bow hand. Again, each time you will check that the thumb is curled. These fingers are down and around onto the frog. This one is spaced and sitting on its middle section on the top. And then pinky is tapped it is very relaxed, like I could squash it if I wanted to. It does not press. And every time we set our bow, it's either going to be pointed to the ceiling or our instrument will be out and then we'll set it down. But don't try to hold your bow like this. You can see that my finger's collapsing. It's uh, gonna set you up to fail. So keep it upright. This is the first thing I need you to do. I need you to practice this to the point where you can accurately do it. And it looks like my hand. So watch this segment again, do it quite a few times. Um, and then I'll check on you and we can, we can move on.
Now we're going to work on setting your instrument. I'm going to allow you to use one of my shoulder rests for right now. We'll um, get you a shoulder sponge soon. But your shoulder rest is attached to the bottom of the instrument. It slides on and you can see that one side is lower than the other. And here, this is called our chin rest. So the lower side will be on the same side as the chin rest. So it just slides on like this. Just enough till it's on. You don't have to really push it hard. Okay, so I'm gonna show this to you to, from two different angles. I'm gonna have to back up quite a bit here. All right, so we hold the instrument from our shoulder or from its shoulder. It's in our left hand and it goes out to the side and it's straight out. Then I'm going to turn, 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 turn it so that the button points to the ceiling and I'm looking at it right now. So this little black dot here is the button. So I'll go back, looking at the button. I'm gonna do a big rainbow arch and I'm gonna almost hit myself in the face at the last moment. I'm going to lift my chin, set it down and then set my chin. And if it's in the right place, I can, I can still talk to you. My hands are here. Look ma, no hands. Show that to you again. So from the shoulder, way up to the side, turn, rainbow, set, and then no hands. So it goes onto my shoulder, not onto my chest, because if it's on my chest, it falls down to the ground. It looks pretty bad. When it's out here, it looks much better. My strings should be parallel to the floor, so always running in a straight line. I'm gonna show it to you from this angle as well, so you can see how far out I am. All right, so I've got my shoulder. This is called lining up, by the way. So right now my camera is what I need to line up to. So in class, you'll do the same thing. You'll line up to me. It means that your left side of your entire body will point at whatever you need it to point at. So your teacher, your music, that sort of thing. So the instrument comes out, it turns, angle it to your face, lift your chin, and set. So you can see that my shoulder and the scroll, which is the swirly part over here, all point in the same direction. So does my nose. That also looks over that way. So don't have your head like this. It'll tilt, it'll make your head tilt. Point your head towards whatever you're looking at along with your shoulder and your scroll. So those are the things I want you to practice right now. We're not going to practice making sound on our instrument. We're gonna simply work on making sure that we can set our instrument in the right spot. We can set our bow in the right spot. And then the next time I have your class, which will be on Friday, we will, um, I'll make a new video for you to show you how to start making sounds on your instrument, but don't make any sounds yet. We have to get these two things down because if you don't hold it properly with your bow or your instrument, it's just going to sound really terrible. So um, have fun practicing, yay!